Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you about an application I found several years ago that I've been using ever since in my projects and hobbies. It's called Microsoft OneNote. It's free to download. You don't have to download any other programs like Office or Microsoft 365 or any of that. It's available on Windows for Windows platform, Mac, uh, an iPad, an iPhone, Android, and the web. And as far as I'm concerned, it's really fantastic. You can access it from any computer that has access to a web. It saves the files on your local machine where it was created and also on, in the cloud. So it's very accessible. Also, I will put in the notes here the, uh, the link for where you can download it. So rather than talk about it uh, anymore, I'd like to show you what I use it for in my hobbies, including model railroading, amateur radio, and how versatile it is. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, this is a video on Microsoft OneNote, which is the free digital notebook for your hobbies. So let's get to it. As far as the operation and organization of OneNote goes, OneNote is organized into notebooks, folders within the notebooks, and documents within folders. On each document or page, you can insert text and pictures from a variety of, of methods and documents, such as Word, text documents, screen captures, uh, directly from some app applications with ha which have an interface built in. Also, you can insert onto a page video and sound, uh, any kinds of graphics, shapes, lines, freehand drawings, and including spreadsheets, tables, PowerPoint slides, images, equations. You can put in there links or actual icons for particular documents. This is probably 95% of the way I use OneNote. Here's a top level look at OneNote. On the left hand side you see all the notebooks that describe my hobbies and interests. On the top you see a list of folders or tabs that are underneath each one of the notebooks. And on the right hand side you'll see a list of pages. Now to add a new page, usually the default is untitled. You just type in the name on the page itself. And you'll see over here that'll become the, the name of that particular page. And then you can add whatever you want on there. Let's take a look at what I have. This is under the model trains notebook in the model trains notebook and we'll look at the inventory tab so we go over to inventory which we're already there and then click this page ID and it'll show you in this case a picture of my locomotive the ID motive power whether it's steam or, or uh, diesel the manufacturer decoder type decoder model era road name road number date purchased and I'm thinking of adding maybe a, possibly a couple of more columns here. So this is a quick way to find out what I have if I want to go to a, a model train show and just print this out and take it along with me. Another um, application for this which I use to organize my notes is under wiring. This is a, an example of a layout, my layout, that took me quite a while to implement. It's a auto reverse loop and it was very difficult to, to, to get it to work so I want to make sure I got it documented correctly and in here I have uh, double insulated gaps um, loop feed which is a loop feed which is the normal feed normal being this is the normal um, loop and over here is the loop side the reversing loop and I actually did this in PowerPoint then imported it uh, into OneNote and that's been very helpful Another thing I have here is track cleaning solutions. The great debate about what's the best track cleaner to use. And I made a list of them based on an article in MRH magazine from best to worst. And I wanted to remind myself what, what the best cleaners were. So I documented it here. Then also I have a tab here for scenery. Why do I have that? Well, I built a, a mountain on my layout and uh, it, I finished it off and it came out really pretty good the way I wanted it. And I wanted to make sure I could duplicate that if I had to. 
So I made a copy of the back of uh, the instructions on how to do the different washes to, to make sure that came out the same way if I did another one or if I had to touch it up. So let's go over to the amateur radio notebook now. And this is the shack tab and the page is called rig and antenna connections. This is what I have in my ham radio shack and you'll see here I got uh, the different rigs in the front, the front of them and the back of them. I just copied these off the manufacturer's website and pasted them on here. Let me move this over. Uh, one thing in one note you can make it bigger and smaller by using the control shift key or you can hit this button here and that'll give you a full page screen and then you can fit it to the screen. So the purpose of this was to um, document where I have my connections. So this is the rig switch which selects any any one of the rigs and then this is the antenna switch which allows you to pick an antenna to go to one of those rigs you've chosen. And at the bottom here I have an antenna tuner. Um, over here I have a software defined radio and over here this is my portable rig IC705. Um, this switch uh, c converts or switches the VHF and the UHF rigs to a 2 meter 440 antenna. So that's what I use that for. Um, so let's look at another documentation I have here and this is waterproofing coax connectors PL259. There's a lot of debate on that going around and I finally found one that works for me and I'm real happy with it so I wanted to document that make sure I, I had that available to me. Um, another list I had here I, I built an antenna for what my vacation home and I wanted to document what the SWR was at different frequencies. This is an NFED um, antenna that I put together. So let's go over to the computer notebook now. This is a documentation of my home network configuration. And I would have a lot of trouble trying to re reconfigure this if I didn't have this documentation. It, it shows where the, the router and the hubs are connected to, um, the switches. It shows where each port goes on the, on the router. Um, it also shows where the Wi-Fi extenders I have around the house, uh, what their names are and what channel on the radio each one of the Wi-Fi access points are connected to. And this is a, a copy of Wi-Fi management from the router documentation or the, the router website. And you can see here that I have the radios tuned so that I have uh, them on different channels to avoid interference. The other thing I have here is um, an IP, advanced IP scanner. So this is my network in the house and what's connected to it over here the name, the manufacturer and the MAC address and over here I have the farther over I have the IP address. Let's take a look at uh, the home automation network now. Um, home auto automation notebook. I have here a documented of a, uh, a data sheet for a solid state relay that I bought and I wanted to make sure I didn't lose that because uh, it's got the spec sheet on it and it's uh, it's maximum specifications, absolute maximum ratings and so on. So I have that here. Then under gadgets, I have a project I built and I uh, copied this uh, lightning detector from online and I made some modifications to it. And so this, this is the circuit diagrams and then I show the actual a lightning detector itself so I can see where everything is where I don't have to pull it apart if I want to ask where uh, find out where something is and um, I did a video on that so if you want to see that you can look at one of my YouTube videos also over here there's a tab where there's more more tabs or folders here that can't fit across the top so you can go into software here and I actually have some software for the home automation system on how I did certain uh, reporting of temperatures and my pump on time for my water pump and uh, just general software information. 
Now we can go to the radio circuits tab and you can see here I copied in this and um, this is the circuit for a crystal radio actually a high-powered crystal radio and then under this page coil calculators I have a link which will take me to a calculator to calculate coil inductance all right here's a blank page and I'll show you some of the tricks that I use to put information into this if you want to put a table in you just click on it and pick the number of columns and rows release and you're there and you can put pictures in each one of these cells as I've shown you or data whatever you want to put in here um, if you also want to put in uh, a picture there's a neat little gadget here called screen clipping and this is my desktop right now and I'm gonna clip it this is what's showing this is a picture of the eclipse that's happening on April 8th and I wanted to determine where the total track was so all you do is drag a rectangle around what you want to clip on your screen and there it is it's into OneNote and you can move it around and play with it and size it and do whatever you want so that's real handy so I would encourage you to play around with OneNote I think you'll find it very useful and valuable uh, I know I have uh, again it's it's free to download and play around most of the features in there are, are totally free and if you found this video useful please like and subscribe and consider becoming a member of the channel thanks for watching